The following is a story that is based on a dream that I had a little while ago, about a year ago. The entire story is exactly as it appeared to me in the dream. I've done close to no editing to it whatsoever. So, the dream was that I was a cat, but I was also a detective. And the setting was a Neural-like metropolis with Egyptian architecture. I was going around asking questions that no one wanted to ask. It was a city full of animals and no humans anywhere. I go to a local cat bar and order a milk. I ask the bartender, has the researcher been by lately? bartender replies, ain't been around since you spooked him with your questions, but I heard he'd be stopping by for the headliner. There was a poster of a performer called Fee Emmeline. She comes on in an hour, right? I ask. You can stick around as long as you don't scare my customers. So. I sit tight for a bit and have a couple more rounds of milk. Eventually, I saw the researcher in the crowd as the singer came on. She starts singing Fly Me to the Moon. I get close to the researcher and say, I haven't seen you in a while. And he gets a little freaked out. He relaxes when it sees that it's just me. He looks very concerned and says, Listen, I found something important. Meet me in the library at midnight. I'll leave the back door unlocked. I watch him suspiciously as he leaves, as the whole thing feels very uneasy. He looks nervous as he makes his way out the bar. Later that night, as I'm walking towards the library, two jackals spot me and block my path. They square up and try to intimidate me. I just grab out a bone from my trench coat and throw it across the street. Both of them blindly run after it and I make my getaway. Eventually I get to the library and I see that the back door is unlocked but also open. My suspicion rises and I stealthily make my way in. In the distance I see the researcher working in the dark with a desk light on. I'm not sure what to make of this, so I just climb one of the bookcases and sit on top and just observe for a little bit to get an idea of what's going on. Eventually I decide to go down since I feel that it's safe enough, but a large dark figure approaches the researcher. The dark canine figure picks him up and tells him to stop snooping around. The researcher replies, everyone deserves to know the truth. Then the dark figure goes, in that case, and bites his throat. I yell, hey! And the figure gets startled and runs away. I start to chase after them, but stop mid-sprint. I look back and realize that the researcher is dying at the desk. I go up to him and try to figure out a way to help. He's bleeding out badly, but he just stops and asks me, Ever wonder? why the city is always dark. Find the light and you'll find the answers, he says as he hands me a small amulet. I quickly look over the amulet and by the time I look back down, the researcher had passed. I tear up a little and look through his notes quickly as I think I might find something important. I hear someone coming and I decide not to stick around this time and then just make a getaway out the window. Much later that night, I walk home and all the nocturnal animals are out. I get to my building and I go up to my apartment. I put away my things and then I get some dinner out. And as I'm snacking on some cans of tuna, I look over the researcher's notes. I remember the little amulet and pull it out of my pocket to examine it. On one side it's a beetle, on the other side 
a flame engraved into it. I finish eating and then grab my notebook and then go up the scratch post that leads to my bed. Before I go to bed, I flip through the notes some more. And I come across a note that says to hold a flame under the amulet on the fire engraving side. I remember that I have a Zippo lighter right in my bedstand. I go through it and find the lighter. I turn it on and then I put the flame under the amulet. Almost immediately, a sun-like spotlight shoots out. I place the box on the floor and just stare at the light. It looks as if a portal opens up in my ceiling and a beetle starts flying down from the portal. The beetle has a small glow to it and it floats over to me and says, We have to hurry. They can sense the light. They'll be here soon. I look at the beetle very confused as it goes to open the window to my apartment. Hurry to where? I say. Then I hear a loud knocking at the front door. If you want to know the truth, follow me, says the beetle as it floats out the window. I grab the amulet and the lighter and once again make a window exit. I leap out of the window and just follow the beetle. Mind telling me where you're taking me? I ask as I follow. To the clock tower! We travel by a rooftop for a couple of blocks as we get closer to the tower. And about two blocks away from the tower, we stop and we survey the surroundings. Almost there! At this point, the, be the beetle has hidden in my hat. Mind telling me why you hid in my hat? I ask him. To avoid being seen by the jackals. What jackals? As I say as I take cover. They're all around the clock tower and watching it closely. I peek over the wall that I'm using as cover. I become somewhat annoyed. How the heck are we supposed to go in unnoticed? Look on the ground towards your left. As he points to a manhole on the ground. At this point I get very annoyed. You know I'm a cat, right? The sewer is the only way in without being noticed. I reluctantly agree. This truth of yours better be worth it, I say as I go into the sewer. Eventually we exit somewhere in the basement of the clock tower. But before exiting that level, we hear two jackals outside the room. One says, any word from Anubis? The other says, says if we don't find the scarab, we'll be banished back to the darkness. Then they both walk away. Anubis, I say, huh. I've heard the researcher mention him. He's the reason you're all in the dark. But soon, Ra will bring back the light. I check to make sure the coast is clear. Then we head up to the tower and I hang from lights and behind walls to dodge and avoid being spotted. Eventually we make it to the top. There I find four jackals guarding a stone cat statue. Beetle goes, Put me on the floor with the hat covering me. I'll distract them. So I do that. And then he further instructs me, Make your way up to the ceiling platform. Then insert the amulet into the center of the sun in order to learn the truth. The hat starts sliding on the floor towards the jackals and they get very confused and distracted. I take advantage of this opportunity and climb the nearby scaffolding, slowly going towards the top platform. As I climb on top of it, I take a peek back down to see what's going on. The jackals by this point had caught the beetle. I get worried, but remember my mission. I go to the center of the stone slab and I see that there's a 
a small slot big enough for the amulet to fit in. I put it in the slot, but nothing happens. I look back over the edge, and the beetle looks back at me. I give him a confused look. The beetle just yells, You have to light it! Just like you did before! This alerts the jackals to my location. And then the one holding the beetle immediately crushes him and then eats him. No! I freak out, but know what's going to happen if I don't complete this. So I rush over to the center, light my Zippo lighter, and drop it on the amulet. Then the whole stone slab starts glowing, as bright as the sun. And just like before, a portal opens right in the center of the giant slab. Slowly from the portal, a humanoid bird starts descending down. And it's the god Ra. And he says, Tell Anubis his curse is lifted. Then his eyes start glowing, and he vanquishes the jackals. Then he turns to the cat statue, and depetrifies her. She appears a little out of it, but quickly recovers. Ra! Ra! You saved me! Ra says, Best! I'm sorry I could not aid you sooner. The light slowly starts shining back down on the city as it did before. Ra says, But at least now your city will be restored to normal. Bast and Ra are conversing and I'm just looking from afar. Then Ra spots me. He uses telekinesis to move me and brings me down in front of them. This is the hero that saved you. I kept looking down since I was intimidated. Bast just picks me up and gives me a big hug. How can I ever repay you? And then she puts me down and I say, what happened to the humans? They still exist. Somewhere else, where it's their sacred duty to take care of animals. Until Anubis manages to corrupt their minds, chimes in Ra. Would you like to go there and see for yourself? Says Bast. Sure, but first, Mr. Ra, I'm very sorry that I couldn't save Beetle. He was the real hero. He sacrificed himself. Worry not, responds Ra. He simply returned to the Light Realm. Oh, okay, I say as I pick up my hat. That's good to hear. I get myself ready, and then Bast goes, Come on, little man. She picks me up, and I start feeling lighter. She lets me float up towards the portal that Ra came through, and then I just get sucked up. I find myself walking out of a manhole near a park, but my clothes and hat have disappeared. I'm just looking around confused, and as I'm surveying the surroundings, a little girl runs up to me. Oh my gosh, he's so cute! Can we keep him, please? She pleads to her mom. Sure, sweetheart. Yay! Says the little girl. And the next thing you know, the scenery changes, and I'm just on the girl's lap, on their front porch. She's scratching behind my ear, and I think to myself, I could get used to this, as I drift off to sleep. And... That's when I woke up. That's the whole dream. It's kind of unusual, but I really enjoyed it. And it was one of those dreams where you wake up from it and you just stop for a while and you think to yourself, wait, what? But at least I managed to get it all down on paper. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any dreams you'd like to share that you may enjoy seeing maybe sketched out, let me know. 
um, or if you just want to share any dreams for others to hear let me know I if you don't want to narrate them I can read them out and put them on the podcast whatever works um, I just really love listening to dream stories and then also adding visuals to them or audio thank you again for listening and we'll see you next time on the let's dream podcast <laughs>